Hi everyone and welcome to the first ServiceNow Wish Doctor Guide to ServiceNow episode for the decade. We are going for number 26 and hopefully it works smooth. I've just moved into a new room. I actually broke my mic. I don't know why they do stuff in plastic but if you can see here this part shouldn't be loose so yeah hopefully it will hold throughout the whole video got some small parts over here and some other stuff that threw out the window almost uh, anyway glad to be back finally up and running again hopefully I will be more often getting those videos out to you and today we're going to start with something I don't really know how to put that into one sentence but uh, we'll go into that in a few seconds I call that one filtering depending on it comes from the service portal or the old UI and soon we'll get into what that is let me hope that my course not I have to do like this come on there we go for those who doesn't know me my name is Goran Lundqvist aka the witch doctor been around in service now community for almost six years now been everything from a customer to a partner and now working internally on service now as a developer for service now themselves so I'm pretty much working on the instances just like you guys works on your company or our partners uh, love being in the community, trying to help out as much as possible. I just put out a few bullet points. If you would like to connect, just hit me on LinkedIn or something. It will be, I always hate this one. Over there, I think, I can't see my screen right now. So, over there, you can see the YouTube, LinkedIn, <coughs> follow the YouTube channel, of course. Might be over there as well. Also, for almost a year ago, I published my book, which is kind of insane. It's always been a year few bullet put points what's in my main focus was to get the stuff that I done wrong the stuff that I found put it in a book give that to you guys so you don't need to need to do it again uh, still valid then of course we know service now we develop very fast so, I mean this one was written for Madrid and now Orlando is coming up so anyway let's not do that market anymore let's hit what are we're going to do what am I talking about so this is actually one requirement I had myself uh, when I was building and that was that depending on if a user looked at a form for a record through the portal or through the back end UI I would like to give them different view rules or different views um, and that meant that we had actually a couple of view rules and when I go to the form widget and look through a record, it actually doesn't take the portal record or portal view. It actually goes through the view rule and gives me the same view as I had in the back end. And somehow I need to figure out how do I know if the query or the, <coughs> the question is coming from a portal view or from the back end. And then I actually talked to some colleagues and they have kind of a similar stuff but they would like to have a query business rule to run depending on if the query comes from the portal or from the back end. I was going to say something more but I don't remember what that is. Talking about view rules, eh. let's go in and take a look instead. So basically, so we have our nice little instance here. So if we take a look at what we're doing. Yeah, now remember, this is actually the first time I have found out functionality that works in a scoped app, but not in the global app. So for this functionality to work, sadly, you have to be in a scoped app. I haven't found a way to do this in the global scope. If you find out, please just write in, in the comments below this YouTube video and we'll get the word out for that one as well. But basically, and it's just a little, little thing you need to do, is that I created 
let's go for the query business rules first and it's basically the same stuff for the, the view rule so I'll just hit business rules and click on the right one and in my case I just hit one in the in in the case uh, scope to show you and what you can do if it's loaded oh by the way while we're waiting for this one to load I got asked in another video where my ServiceNow water bottle was. I have actually bought myself a new one. I don't know if you can see it says ServiceNow at least. It's a really nice one that keeps it really, really cold for a really long time. So, got one finally back on track. So, this is... It's not harder than this. Uh, and just to show you how it works, I just throw in a nice little log. So, let's go to uh, cases and I'll just open a list because we know query business rules run on list view as well. Now if I just click to refresh, you can see that this is what I get back then. This is the filter string. So I know, in this case, if I look at list, it will look like this. Let's take a look to go to a, a case. Come on. We'll take another one. You can see that it just doesn't have the underlying list. Pretty much like you can see in the URL, right? Because that is what we are kind of looking at. Now, the fun part, and you might have already seen it in the logs that I showed you because I learned the hard way to actually test it before I record it so I don't start recording it and then it doesn't work. So if I instead go to the portal and try to look at something and I'll just reload this page and we'll reload and you can see that now suddenly you can see you get a lot of information here. So this is where you can actually start doing your differentiation between is it coming from the portal or is it coming from the back end. So this is a, a nice quick way perhaps. I don't know the, the deep or details of that requirement but I can imagine if you perhaps you just want to <coughs> change a query that is hard coded in a widget, an out of the box widget and you don't want to clone that widget and start editing it because you like it and want to keep it on upgrades you can do it through this one as well uh, then of course it all depends on the requirements in total so don't ever do this or don't ever do that uh, just keep it in mind as a, a solution if we go to view rules and I haven't actually done those but so <laughs> I said earlier I tested everything myself uh, but then again, here we are. Uh, I wonder, I don't think this one, this one, ah, look, this is, a, I actually did it earlier when I thought about this. So basically it's not done as you can see and I've done it in a global scope so it doesn't really work. But you can look at the file string and what I actually did, I looked at the string and when you have the view rule you can actually see the widget name uh, let me see if I can just give an example that I'm allowed to share. So hold on. And do, 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 come on. There we go. And I'll soon put this up on the screen. Euros. That one, I think. It's, this shouldn't be any secret. I'll just do like this. I'll do click edit. And then I'll just I'll 
just do like that. Copy and here we go. Here is an example. And, oh, then overlay. Mm, here we go. Sorry for that. Paste in that one. Here you can see I'm pretty much doing the same. Look at the URI and here you can see that I'm looking if it either has a couple of rolls or if the file string is this one. And this is our own customized widget ICP form. So if any of those ones are true, return the SP view, otherwise, we return the coordinator view. So that means that if someone um, that normally has uh, the coordinator view, so they look at the back end and get the coordinator view, but if that same person goes to the portal, they will actually get the service portal view. Uh, but then again, remember, it only works in, in scope applications. I think that was actually it. It was a, a quick video. Hopefully it will help you out in some circumstances or requirements you have. Uh, if you find a solution for the Global Scope, please comment below and I'll, I'll put up a link and a shout out to you and get that solution out for people as well. So thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon. If I can find where to hit stop. <laughs>